The drinkable tap water in this glass will maybe one day be in a museum. We're here today to take you on our journey from university students to social entrepreneurs. And we're specifically going to focus on our passion to produce a product for those of you who care about the global water crisis, but may not necessarily have the right tools to tackle it. Despite water covering the Earth's surface, drinking water may not be as plentiful as we might imagine. 97% of all of the water on Earth contains too many salts and minerals for us to drink. 2% of the remaining water is frozen in glaciers, and that leaves just 1% of all of the water on Earth suitable for human consumption. To make matters worse, that 1% isn't spread evenly around the globe. We rely on 37 underground reservoirs to help us out. According to an article in Water Resources Research, 21 of those reservoirs are set to be irreversibly emptied. The global demand for fresh water will exceed supply by 40% in the year 2030. As you can imagine, these were some terrifying statistics to find as a young person in, in the year 2020, with hopefully 50 years in front of me. It made me start to think and wonder, is there really a water crisis where I am? So we looked into it, and a study in 2014 of all of the world's largest countries and their largest cities, and it found that one in four cities were actually facing water scarcity. The list of cities most likely to run out of water featured some really unexpected names, such as Beijing, Tokyo, Cairo, Istanbul, and even London. Joanna and I traveled here today from London. So when we first heard these statistics, we couldn't quite believe it. I mean, England is renowned for its constant rainfall. It was raining when we boarded the plane yesterday at Heathrow. <laughs> we thought, well, surely a developed country such as the UK can't be facing a dramatic water crisis. Surely we've overcome it already. And then we came across this quote from the chair of the UK's Environment Agency. England will face water shortages by 2050. That's on our government website. They're not hiding it. We will run out of water in England within our lifetime, and yet no one is talking about this issue to the public. Something has to be done. We started looking at household water data and found that students living in accommodations use, on average, 40 to 50% more water, with the majority of that being in showers. Now, this was really confusing. Students are one of the most environmentally friendly groups with a passion to not impact the planet. So why don't students care? Well, we went ahead and interviewed our fellow students about their showering habits and we found that most of them spoke about the importance of taking therapeutic showers, especially around the time of stressful deadlines, which is honestly something I can relate to and something evidently you guys can relate to as well. <laughs> Women in particular spoke about their beauty routines and also the length of their hair as a reason why they maybe couldn't save as much water as they'd like, but almost every person we spoke to mentioned the lack of control within their rented facilities, so being unable to fit water-saving shower heads, for example, and other similarly sustainably focused products that would help people reduce their water usage in the long run. We found that other generations in different living arrangements seem to care more about limiting their water use, and we realized that we were missing a pretty important factor, motivation. In the UK, student accommodations bundle the price of the water bill in with the monthly rent, and that creates no monetary motivation for students to reduce their water usage, as they pay the same amount every month, no matter how much water they use. Joanna and I felt pretty guilty about that as students at the time, and we thought, perhaps there's something we can do here. Maybe there's a way that we could reuse that water, the shower water, for something that actually motivated students. Maybe there's something that they really need or really care for. 
So this sat on our mind for weeks, and it was only when I had to pack up all my laundry and travel across campus for over 20 minutes just to be met by dirty laundrettes and broken machines that I realized we'd found a motivation. So we got to work developing a solution that would reuse this water in the form of a washing machine. So the idea was you had a tank that you placed on your shower floor, and as you shower, the runoff water is then collected and stored without needing to make changes to the accommodation's plumbing, and it doesn't block the drain. This tank can then be placed back into the unit, and the water is pumped and filtered, making it suitable for laundry. Then a normal laundry process takes place, and ta-da, you have clean clothes washed using your shower water. As a designer, it's very important to talk to your potential consumers. So we worked with our potential users to verify or validate our largest assumptions. The greatest one being, would students even be comfortable reusing their own shower water? <laughs> So we created various images of water in opaque and transparent glasses. And we listed information about the water, such as pH, hardness, color, clarity, and also stated whether or not the water had been filtered. Those images were then given to students, and we asked them to pick which ones they felt most comfortable washing their clothes in, and why. The first thing we noticed is that water that had any yellow tones or foreign bodies in, no matter how small, made people really uncomfortable. The second thing we noticed is that users were wary of water in opaque glasses. They seemed to not like being able to see the quality of the water. This point of not feeling comfortable when you physically can't see the water was further reinforced when we showed users glasses of clear water with dangerously high and low pHs, and they chose this over perfectly safe tap water that they simply couldn't see. It was clear to us that if our design was going to work, we would need to show the user this filtered shower water. And so we included transparent materials on the machine, as well as a blue-tinted drum to make the user feel more comfortable. So that's our portable washing machine, that's our Lilo baby. And uh, it's been placed into our hopefully desired environment of a student accommodation. So now we had an idea of how our product looks, we have an idea of how our product works, and we were pretty sure students would be comfortable reusing their own shower water. We got to work optimizing the mechanics. So we asked a group of students, yes, another group of students, to keep a laundry diary, so documenting what clothes they would wash and how often they would wash them. And we found that the amount of clothes that students were washing in one go resulted in the drastic underfilling of machines. So essentially, the excess water in the system wasn't being used, and it just went wasted. We wanted to stop that happening with our own machine. So we shrunk down the size of our drum, and then we shrunk down the size of our machine. And that created a smaller, more compact product that would fit a lot better into students' smaller sized accommodations. This did, however, have a knock-on side effect. As we'd now shrunk down the size of our machine, it meant that we'd gone from being a front-loading washing machine to a top-loading washing machine, like you see in the image. Top-loading washing machines typically use a lot more water, as they use a kind of dunk and soak method, if you can imagine like a bucket, uh, whereas a front-loading washing machine uses a dip method. So as it spins, it dips the clothes through a tray of water, and you can see how that's probably less water. We wanted to bring that dipping solution over to our own machine. So we engineered the perforated spherical drum that you can see on screen now. The spherical drum, despite being loaded from the top, does in fact dip the clothes through the tray of water as it spins, aerating the detergent and reducing water usage, which is what we're all about here. <laughs> To put that into context, a typical washing machine uses about 64, that's right, 64 liters of water for a single cycle. Our washing machine, with its smaller load capacity and innovative drum solution, uses only eight liters of water. And remember, that's eight liters of recycled shower water. So 
so that was our tank and drum designed. Now onto the most important part, the filtration. We ran some water tests and found that shower water actually has a higher pH because of the shampoos. Now, we wanted to make sure that we didn't filter this change in pH because detergent actually has a better chemical reaction in this higher pH water. So we got to work developing prototypes to test that this theory would actually work in real life, and we created this prototype. So our prototype would test our water idea and our drum and check that it worked. But this was a really important moment for us because we knew if we couldn't get a wash quality that was equal to a commercial washing machine, no matter how eco our product, it simply wouldn't sell. So we started the test. I went ahead and collected water in the shower with our matte prototype. As you can see here, that water was then filtered and pumped into the base of our machine. The spherical drum was then filled with detergent, a few of my shirts, and also a wash quality test strip, which is essentially is a piece of fabric that we washed on a range of different machines to compare and contrast how well they did their job of washing clothes. Our test strip was essentially a small white piece of cotton that we got by cutting up one of Joanna's shirts and by staining with various substances such as blood, oil, chocolate, and also red wine. Um, don't ask us where we got the blood from. Uh, <laughs> so we set the machine off, and then we held our breath for the 10-minute wash cycle. Once it had completed, we took the test strip out, and we hung it up to dry. The results of the washing test, or the results of the stain test, revealed to us that our washing machine washes just as well as a typical washing machine, and it achieves that wash in a fifth of the time. So there we have it, success. <laughs> Our product achieves uh, its desired outcome, and our theory so far has been proven correct. Since then, we've been developing the product further with the hopes of running a pilot test with a few students and a few machines before moving on to mass manufacture. Since then, we've also been marketing our ideas, and we've got loads of emails from campers, mm -hmm. people living on boats, people in small homes, and people from countries facing water scarcity mm -hmm. issues. All of them wanted a smaller, portable solution that used less water. Mm -hmm. It was in this moment that we realized that our product wouldn't just help students, it could spread across the globe and offer clean clothes without a dirty conscience. We wanted to finish off today with two points, the first from myself, the second from Joanna. I specifically want to reach out to any businesses, entrepreneurs, influencers, educators, NGOs out there. The world is facing a huge water crisis, and it's not something that can be solved with a one-off invention. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort from both individuals and groups alike. We also want to reach out to talk to all the young people and the students, and to tell you all that you can make a difference. Over the last two years, we've been inspired by the sheer amount of people we have met that are innovating new ways to help the planet. On the board behind us are just some of these inspirational people that we've met. Gen Z is one of the largest generations, and our potential for impact is massive. Together, we can make waves. Thank you. <laughs>